strum. into the back of its neighbor. Mussolini, founder of fascism, self-appointed high priest of war, draws the saber he has long been rattling on the sidelines. With France defeated and England tottering, he commits the Italian Empire to support his personal pact of steel with Hitler. It is October 28, 1940. Covetous of personal glory, jealous of his military prestige, Mussolini launches his legions into Greece on a campaign of conquest whose outcome seems certain. But the Italian armies ordered to Athens are ill-equipped, poorly trained. These men go into battle unaware their own commanders believe that for them, war is suicide. Gives on troops, outnumbered but not unprepared, meet the Italians with high-hearted resistance and smash the reluctant invaders back across the border. The legend of fascist military might, the myth of Mussolini's vaunted eight million bayonets, breaks to pieces against the rugged, hostile hills of Albania. guaranteed Greek independence. King George VI and Churchill assure the Greeks, your cause is our cause. We will fight a common foe and we will share a united victory. And then across the Mediterranean, the hard-pressed British rush troops and supplies to the embattled Greeks, sailing fearlessly under the bays of Axis bombers. of Greece under Admiral Cunningham, Commander-in-Chief, Mediterranean. The overtaxed Royal Navy brings in 50,000 British and New Zealand troops, hastily diverted from North Africa, where the Axis has already lighted the fires of war. But the long-standing alliance between Greece and England is being honored, no matter what the risk. Here democracy was born. Here blossomed the first flowers of Western civilization. And here, once more, man must fight for his freedom. intervention swiftly brings retaliation. Down from the north surge German hordes in overpowering strength. Down
down they come to the rescue of their bungling Italian allies. Down through the Balkan valleys, the German Wehrmacht storms into Greece in blitz tempo, crushing everything which stands in its way. Once again, the ragged parade of the defeated, the ordeal of the helpless. Interrogation of prisoners reveals to the Germans the scope of the Allied disaster. More than 11,000 casualties. And once again, the struggle of survivors to escape by sea. Greece becomes another Dunkirk. But in defeat, there is no despair. The Grand Alliance is in the making. If the East looks dark, in the West, Roosevelt and the Americans extend to the English sympathy, understanding, help, and hope. And not by Eastern windows only, when daylight comes, comes in the light. In front, the sun climbs slow. How slow. But westward, look. The land is bright. But for a time yet, the Germans will continue to plot and push and plunder. With Greece secure, the Axis seeks full control of the Mediterranean, North Africa, and the all-important Suez Canal. Through unnumbered centuries, Carthage, destroyed by Rome, has silently observed other legions. Other men struggle for domination of North Africa. Now, once again, the course of Western society is being determined by what transpires on these dreary wastes, these trackless sands. For the Italians, North Africa has meant defeat, disaster. They have vainly challenged the outnumbered British. So the Germans send in their troops to salvage this vital campaign. They mount a major offensive to drive into Egypt, to drive to Suez. Temperature, over 100. Miles to go, more than 1,250, mostly across the Libyan desert. But the Germans are trained and equipped, hardened and armored for the long, hazardous hall to the east. flows back and forth across the rim of North Africa. Now, under Field Marshal Rommel, Axis armies surge forward, surge east. For the Germans, Rommel is their hero in the sun, their desert fox. For the Allies, Rommel is the most cunning adversary, most formidable tactician. On desert sands, Rommel and his troops reenact the victories already won in Poland, in France. Summer, 1942. Blitzkrieg in the desert. The Invincible Africa Corps plunges into Egypt in victorious pursuit of the retreating British. In one 17-day spurt, Rommel's jabby, stabbing armor comes 350 miles closer to Alexandria, closer to Suez. And 
while the Panzers advance, other Allied fronts are also cracking. The Russians fall back. And with the United States now in the war, Axis submarines are pillaging Anglo-American lifelines in the Atlantic. The advance of the Africa Corps is strewn with monuments to Allied defeat. Even Tobruk, most stubborn of desert bastions, falls before the Axis. Tobruk, gone with all its equipment, all its precious supplies. And with it go 30,000 Allied prisoners of war. Only 60 miles from the port of Alexandria, Rommel pauses to reorganize, entrench, and await supplies for his final push. Today we hold the gateway to Suez, he tells the world. We have every intention of getting there. We have not come this far with any idea of being flung back. Meanwhile, Hitler's other armies, having overrun all Europe, swamp Russia, and bend south through the Caucasus toward the Middle East toward Suez. German conquest of Suez in the Middle East would mean loss of oil and might well mean loss of World War II for the Allies. The Germans consider subjugation of the Eastern Mediterranean more deadly to the British Commonwealth of Nations than the capture of London itself. Suez is on the spot. Garibaldi is in nominal command of North Africa. But it is the German general, Rommel, who has won the victories. And it is the German Hitler who dominates Axis strategy in the Mediterranean, which Italians call Mare Nostrum, our sea. On control of this sea depends whether the supplies get through to enable Rommel to reach Suez, whether the English can cut the Axis off and save Suez. The Italian fleet has been reluctant to challenge the Royal Navy. Hitler now demands that Mussolini's Navy liquidate His Majesty's Navy and clean up the Mediterranean once and for all. The Italian fleet is a question mark. Its morale? Low. Its leadership? Uncertain. It has no aircraft carriers, no radar. Protection has been sacrificed for speed, and the sailors themselves call it the cardboard fleet. But the Italian Navy is swift and skilled in maneuver, excellent in gunnery, communications, and torpedo tactics. mission in the Mediterranean intensifies with every passing week. The 1,800-mile waterway it guards from Gibraltar to Suez is sown with hardship, death, and impending disaster. Not only must the harassed warships support the Allied forces in North Africa, but they must also stop the flow of supplies to Rummel's encroaching panzer divisions. The ordeal is great. The stakes are high.
fleets up all boilers to meet the challenge of the Italian fleet. Spartavento, of Sardinia and Pantelleria, at the Battle of Matapan, the British clash with the Italians in battles on whose outcome rests the fate of the Mediterranean.
the Royal Navy has done its job, cutting access communications to North Africa, while 99% of Allied supplies which leave England reach the Middle East safely. The free world pours its military might into ancient Alexandria, turning the balance in favor of the Desert Army. The army will therefore fall back slowly under enemy pressure. And the Allies lose no time in applying the pressure. 23rd of October, 1942. The British 8th Army under General Montgomery unleashes its all or nothing offensive at El Alamein. In 10 days of furious fighting, the British break the German front. And Rommel's Africa Corps turns in headlong retreat back across the desert. and American ships come through, the ships that saved the Mediterranean. 